Hello everyone welcome to another episode of AV's Maxillofacial and Dental Talk and in this video we are going to be discussing about decoding MFDS examinations in this video we will be discussing everything you need to know about the MFDS examinations conducted by the Royal College of Surgeons now the MFDS stands for membership of the faculty of dental surgery and these examinations are conducted by a group what is known as the Royal Group College of Surgeons what is the purpose behind these examinations they are an independent professional body and a registered charity that promotes and advances standards of surgical care for patients and regulates surgery and dentistry as quoted by the royal college simply meaning these are not license exams meaning if you clear the rcs examinations or the mfds examinations doesn't mean it gives you the right to practice in any particular country if you want to practice in any other country apart from where you have completed your undergraduate degree you have to write the respective license examination then what is the value of this particular diploma first of all the rcs or the royal college of surgeons is a long established internationally recognized qualification and it also marks an achievement above and beyond the primary dental qualification for those who have completed the bds this gives you an in-depth knowledge about what you have to go through or what you have to read in order to become a postgraduate where you have nine options or various specialties to choose from in order to become a postgraduate dentist beyond your undergraduate so this mfds degree is recognized all over the world and gives you a excellent boost for your cv what is the eligibility criteria with respect to the mfds examination they also term this as a bi collegiate examinations candidates must provide evidence of possession of a primary dental qualification that is acceptable to the respective councils which means your bds degree should be valuable and approved by the royal college of surgeons the primary dental qualification acceptable by the councils and also for the second part so all the mfds examinations conducted by the four royal college of surgeons come in two parts which is part 1 and part 2 there are certain criteria for which you are eligible for an exemption from the part 1 examinations of the mfds examinations so who are those doctors who are eligible for an exemption from part 1 well we have made a separate video for that please do check out on it let me briefly mention about the same so those who have a post graduate degree are usually allowed to uh, exempt themselves from part 1 with respect to the royal college of surgeons ireland as far as the other royal college of surgeons are concerned if you have a medical degree or an mbbs degree you are directly eligible to write the part 2 examination here now let's go into the exam format this is usually a two part examination and it consists of part 1 and part 2 all the royal college of surgeons edinburgh glasgow england and ireland have their part 1 as online meaning you can take this examination at your home and from your laptop yes so this is usually a 3 hours online examination with a slight difference in the exam format between the various royal college of surgeons usually being a single best answer single best answers is when you get to choose a single best answer out of the given four or five options the part 2 is an offline or an online examination depending upon which royal college of surgeon you would like to take your exam from if you decided to take it from ireland it's an online examination and if it's going to give going to give it from offline examination then it applies for the other three royal college now there are global centers all over the world where you can choose from where you can uh, write the examination and need not necessarily go to the respective royal college to give your part 2 now what is part 2 test which the part 1 doesn't the part 2 tests the trainee's clinical competence by assessing the communication skills and knowledge and understanding required to manage a range of common conditions so part 2 is an oski or it stands for the objective structured clinical examination so it's a 2 hour examination and it contains of 10 stations where you will be given stations and you have to move from one station to another in order to complete the examination this is the format for the offline examination as far as the online examination is concerned you have to 
take the examination from your home similar to part 1 where you will be subjected to 15 oskis and you will have a duration of 1 and 1/2 hours which is 90 minutes here now what are the various rules for exemptions from part 1 a pass at a part 1 of the mfd of the rcs of ireland the part 2 must be passed within 5 years of passing part 1 now this holds good usually for all the royal college of surgeons meaning uh, if you have cleared the part 1 or if you have got your exemption letter from part 1 then you are supposed to sit for your part 2 exam before the completion of 5 years mjdf exams usually do not exist anymore because they have been replaced by mfds or mfd part 1 at pass at the mfds of the royal college of surgeons of england then the part 2 also must be passed within 5 years of passing part 1 so the rule is pretty much same for the all the royal college of surgeons with respect to exemptions and as mentioned earlier ireland gives you an exemption from part 1 if you have a post graduate or a specialty training for a period of 3 years an additional point to be noted is that candidates are eligible to apply for part 2 provided the part 2 closing date is within the 5 years of having the passed the exemption qualification and candidates who are unable to pass part 2 within the prescribed 5 year time limit may re enter the examination at part 1 so suppose you don't clear the part 2 within the 5 year time then you might be asked to repeat your part 1 examination so what are the various routes for the mfd2 examination so mfd1 followed by mfd2 is the usual route and uh, mfds part 1 from any other royal college for example say you have cleared your part 1 in england glasgow or edinburgh then your part 1 letter which the college mails once you have cleared the examination can be used to apply for part 2 for any other royal college so it's basically there is a reciprocity amongst the various royal college of surgeons here right so mfd1 from one college helps you to uh, approach any other royal college to give their respective mfd2 examination here and dpcd stands for diploma of the primary care of dentistry this is an exam which is exclusively restricted to the royal college of surgeons ireland and it is also an online examination and this is an option instead of mfd1 here now we have made a video uh, explaining the differences between the pcd and mft1 here the point to be noted is one is the exam pattern is pretty much similar here where you have 75 uh, true or false questions where a question is given and you have five statements and you have to choose true or false for all the statements followed by 33 single best answers the other option is mft part 1 where is the ditto the same exam format which was prescribed for dpcd the only difference being with respect to the syllabus while dpcd is mostly clinical about 90% mfd1 has a 50% uh, basic sciences and 50% clinical with respect to ireland examinations and but a point to be noted here is if you clear the dpcd from ireland you are not eligible to write the part 2 of any other a royal college which the mfd1 can give you right so the reciprocity is not applicable with respect to dpcd and the other option to write the mfd2 is getting an exemption from part 1 when you have a post graduate degree or you have a specialty training for 3 years you need to get a letter from your respective university or college and once you mail the royal college of surgeons you are eligible for an exemption from part 1 again this exemption from part 1 uh based on your specialty is applicable only for ireland now with respect to part 2 england the examination is a 2 and a half hour or oski circuit comprising of 14 stations designed to assess the clinical competence in the delivery of dental health care by a clinician with a minimum of 2 years of post qualification training and experience each station will be about 10 minutes long and you will be there will be an observer and an actor actor is someone like a patient who will stimulate the types of patients and clinical consultation scenarios so prior to each oski you will be provided with some notes which may consist of photographs and radiographs and clinical information as far as syllabus is concerned you need to know that all the four mfd examinations from the royal college of surgeons is a general dentistry examination and is not a specialty examination right so you need not go in depth 
to uh, prepare for MFDS examinations, but you have to completely uh, go through your syllabus, which based on the RCS protocols for your MFDS examinations here. Now, what are the advantages of doing this MFD or MFD? It's a global recognition and I can mention and sir, this is not a license exam to practice in any country and you have a different approach to your practice or standard of care because you follow the protocols which are universal and uh, makes you feel better and you will tend to learn more things when you prepare for the examination because of the universal protocols. Now, everybody has different reasons to prepare for the MMPDS examinations here. Some of them want to add it to your next to their name in a CV. Well, boosting their CV is, as far as job opportunities are concerned, there, there might be a candidate who has not cleared the examination while well, you have cleared the examination and you might be given preference. And this is one particular uh, reason why most candidates take the prestigious MFDS examination. The other reason to take the MFDS examination is the FFD RCS, which stands for the Fellowship of the Faculty of Dentistry RCS. So FFD RCS examinations uh, are, is a specialty based examination where each exam is specific for their particular specialty. For example, you have to write the FFD RCS uh, individually if you are an oral medicine specialist. If you are somebody from the oral surgery background, you write what is known as FFD RCS OSN, OM. Then you write FFD RCS for endodontics, FFD RCS for conservative dentistry and so on and so forth like prosto etc. Now the first criteria for the FFD RCS examination is you need to be an active member. Right? So if you have cleared the MFDS examination, you need to renew your membership every year with a small fee. and. Uh, once you have also cleared the examination from one of the uh, Royal College of Surgeons, you can mail the other Royal College of Surgeons and get their degree also. So you can even get your membership from the two or three colleges also. But a point to be noted is every year you have to renew your fee, uh, fee which is about uh, 10,000 Indian national rupees here. And uh, there are other exams which are applicable for the Royal College of Surgeons, which was known as membership examinations like MORTH, MOMS, MPDO, where these are direct uh, examinations written by postgraduate specialists. You don't require an MFDS in order to write your MORTH or MOMS, etc., so on and so forth. But you need to be a postgraduate in order to clear the respective examinations. Most of these examinations, the membership examinations, have a part one and a part two examination. However, for part one, it's not mandatory to have a postgraduate degree, but for your party, you definitely need to have a postgraduate degree. So that's it with respect to MFD videos. So in case of any doubts, feel free to contact us at the uh, following ID. Uh, all the best. And uh, if I can, anyone else can clear these examinations. And uh, we'll make more videos with respect to the preparatory uh, guidance and how long it takes to prepare for these prestigious examinations thank you for watching do subscribe and follow our channel